when you go seeking a Kryptonian in distress, but instead find an army of drones. Here's a look at the brand new McFarlane toys, Page Punchers, Ghosts of Krypton, Brainiac. Haunted by the vision of a spectral General Zod seeking salvation, Superman embarks on a perilous journey into the Phantom Zone, where kal discovers an army of deadly Brainiac drones. Superman soon learns that Val Zod, the Superman of Earth 2, has also been lured into the Zone by ghosts from the past. Although powerless in the Phantom Zone, the Men of Steel donning protective Kryptonian armor suits vow to vanquish Brainiac and the menacing mechanical army. Superman may very well have the strength, but Brainiac has the numbers. Just before, of course, we get a closer look at the Page Punchers Ghost of Krypton Brainiac drone, I'd like to thank the folks over at McFarlane Toys that did provide this sample we could have a look at. This is now, what, the third Page Punchers Ghost of Krypton figure that we've looked at, and yet the drone of Brainiac is definitely my favorite so far. The figure is going to stand in a state that he's in right now at 7 inches in height, or the Brainiac drone is about 18 centimeters tall. Bringing now to bookend on either side of Brainiac. On the left, here's what the figure looks like with Kal-El. On the right, here's what he looks like with Val Zod. We did also get a couple of other Brainiacs, although it tends to be the case when we do get Brainiacs of the DC Multiverse line, it's usually one mold and then we get color variations of that. That's also going to be the case as well when we look at the Ghosts of Krypton Brainiac drone, because we are also going to be looking at the Brainiac himself, which seems to be using the same body. Well, it does seem that history has repeated itself again. The issue to come and clue with the Brainiac drones happens to be Superman Ghosts of Krypton issue 44. If you're just only now dropping into these reviews and wondering why we're talking so much about the fact that this is issue 44, we did start the reviews of Ghosts of Krypton with Kal-El himself, which started things off nicely with issue 1 of 4. But then jumping over, though, to Val Zod happens to be 3 of 4, so we're still, we're still eluded by issue number 2. It will either come in clue with the spectral version of General Zod, or it might very well also come in clue with Brainiac, the regular version of Brainiac. Uh, as though we don't really have... We don't have a really completed story. Obviously, we're missing issue number two. The artwork, though, either way, is still really nice. You can see an idea of really how the Brainiac drones work. Just a large collective of multiple bodies. I mean, even just Superman and Val Zod with armor. I mean, it doesn't seem like... I mean, they obviously have to put up quite a fight to battle as many as they do. Just a nice-looking issue. And I can't again wait to get the issue number two, so I can actually start this from start to finish. By the way, there is also an advertisement for a couple of also DC Multiverse figures. There's the Riddler puzzle box, which is something that we solved here on this channel. There's also advertisements here for the Page Punchers Aquaman Wave, which we did also have a look at. And even though I didn't really get the chance to finish all of this, there is also as well the uh, Fighting the Frozen uh, uh, Batman line too, which I, we looked at Mr. Freeze, we looked at Batman, but still didn't get the chance to have a look at uh, Batgirl and Robin. So we might do that in an upcoming review. And then, of course, there's an advertisement there on the back for a slightly smaller scale of page punchers. Off to the side, the comic goes. The comic doesn't go very far, though, because the trading card that comes included with the clone, or the drone of Brainiac, happens to be the exact issue, just shrunk down in size. They did that, of course, when we had a look at Val Zod, but they didn't do that, though, when we looked at Superman. Superman still seems the strange one of the bunch because he's just literally a, car a cutout of the Man of Steel from that front cover. Whereas the other two, at least if you're going to be keeping them consistent, I'd much, I guess I would rather really just them being the issues themselves because obviously we already have it now twice. It's probably going to be also the case as well when we look at the armored version of Val Zod and probably the same that was said as well when we look at Brainiac. So again, it just seems really out of place that Superman got the card that he did. On the back of the cards, by the way, short of the fact it does give you the, the picture and the name of the character, the real name, by the way, of Brainiac is Vril Dogs. I would imagine it's probably going to still be the same, even though it's a drone of Brainiac. It's probably going to have just the same identity. The read-up, by the way, is exactly the same, so it doesn't really matter whether you read it from Brainiac's card or you read it from Val, Do uh, Val Zod's card. The read-up is going to be exactly the same. So let's put those off to the side. Of course, the figure also comes in clear with a display stand. It doesn't change at all whether it's being the page punchers or not. And of course, that does have one peg that's going to plug into either one of his bum feet. 
The figure comes also include with all these cool little extra appendages. The neat thing that's about them is the fact that they're all using the same universally sized peg. And if you look at the back of the figure's body, he has five placements of holes and all the holes are all the exact same size. So you can probably already put the two together and realize that you could put these anywhere. Say for example, he does have the articulated arm. This for example, can go anywhere. It can go in the top, it can go on the sides. The only thing I would say though about these is that there's certain ones that work a little bit better in other places. Like for example, the tiny little hand that he has here, right? This actually kind of looks like the little miniature kind of deformed hand that the butler has in Scary Movie 2. Remember he's trying to reach down, grab my arm. Can grab? Can I grab with the other arm? No, this is my stronger arm. The way it's bent and the way that the hand curves in like this, it really belongs more so obviously on this side because if you're going to be putting on this, it's going to be facing backwards. And then when you're also putting it on there, you kind of have to be considerate as to where exactly it's going to go. If it goes over the top though, it kind of looks like he's petting the side of his head. And yet, if you put it like right here, it makes a little bit more sense. I like to generally put the smaller arm down here. But again, because they're using the exact same peg, you can put it anywhere on the five different different holes on the back of his body. Uh, that could also really be as well the same case when we're looking at like this arm here, a little clawing arm. Again, you could have it up here. Uh, if you have it up here, it comes a little bit close to, in quarters to his head. Uh, or again, like you, if you want to kind of keep things somewhat consistent with one another, you can also put the claw arm down here as well. And that just plugs in place. Uh, he does also have again like this one here. And, and the neat thing also too about these is the fact that they are making them universal like this. If you do decide you want to pick up more than one drone, which I'm kind of really heavily tempted to do, you could really then just change around the configurations of these so that they're not all going to look the same. So again, if you want to have this one here, for example, or if you want to have it even up at the top, you want to plug it into the top? Okay, we'll plug it into the top. Again, it just easily. If you have any problems, by the way, you can easily just kind of twist them around till eventually they get in place. Does that look a little out of place? Maybe it does. He also comes included with these tentacle pieces. Uh, tentacles, while I wish they could have actually had a wire built into them, they are at least nicely painted. And, you know, again, we're just going to rinse and repeat the steps. That's going to plug in. You want to have it on this side? Okay, we'll have it on this side. That plugs in on the one side, and then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Again, lots of lots of compatibility. The only thing, again, about it is that certain ones do seem like they kind of belong in some areas, like kind of a little butler's arm, for example. really does belong, I feel, kind of more down there. What's kind of interesting, though, also about Brainiac is if you just happen to have another Brainiac in your collection, which we did do at the beginning of this review, I brought in the other Brainiac. Get this guy. Stand for a second. Bringing the uh, Injustice Brainiac, by the way, being that they're also using the same size pegs, you could also, in theory, replace the heads for this one. So if you wanted to have, for example kind of a really abnormal sized body for this version of Brainiac. Again, you just pop the head off. You can, you know, just re replace them. You can just swap them around if you really want to. I I'm just going to leave it as is, but I certainly did want to bring it to your attention that if you wanted to, yeah, you can use the exact same. And being that the, the exact same pegs, you can just, you know, crisscross applesauce. Getting though a closer look though at Brainiac drone, even though you're not really, even if you're not attached to the idea of Ghosts of Krypton, maybe you never even read the comics, have no real interest in any of the comics or any of the characters from this comic line. There's something really cool though about the Brainiac drone. Even if you do have a classic ver version of Brainiac, which I think we have gotten at some point, or maybe if it was just the Injustice version of uh, Brainiac, I think that probably was the case and it was just colored a little bit more in classic colors. This guy would just really serve nicely as just a, a an army of clones or drones behind him. The colors on him are really generally quite good, even though the majority of his body is really just silver. The parts that glow, glow really nicely. So he's got the nice pink there outlining the areas of his eyes. Of course, he's got that familiar three dots, the little symbol that Brainiac always has on the top of his head, but just a nice sculpt on his body. It kind of does, in a way, remind me of the superpowers version of Brainiac, which at one point... Mattel, I think, also released. Yeah, they did release a classic version of that. I had it in my collection. It was one of those figures, unfortunately, I sold down the road. But yeah, it does kind of look, in a way, kind of like that classic-looking Brainiac from the Superpowers line. Uh, of course, he does have some additional pink there on the front of his body as well. There's very little, though, in the way of paint, unfortunately, other than really just his head, other than really just his torso. Everything else really is still kept kind of kind of really just relegated to the silver plastic that they've used. So things like his arms, for example, are the only other things that have black to them, as well as the tops of his legs and the areas of his kneecaps there as well. But just a nice sculpted figure. It's kind of got this interesting looking tortoise shell there on the back of his body with all these additional wires, even though there really isn't a lot of additional washes of paint that go over this to kind of pop some of those details on the figure. It's just a really interesting looking design character. It's not one either that you always have to have straight like this. Like even in the beginning of this review, for example, I kind of had the figure kind of more in a hunched state. And it seems to be the case also when you're looking at him in the comics that a lot of the drones, for example, are more kind of in a hunched over, almost monkey-like state 
Really like the look of this character and how he turned out. Now, he's got one long claw hand there on the one side. He has a hole there, which I, I thought for a second could maybe accommodate many any one of these pegs, for example. But unfortunately, he doesn't. The it's not the case. It's a too large of a hole. It just doesn't work. But he's got one blade arm on one side. And then he's got sort of just a regular arm on the other, even though he's got tiny, tiny little fingers. Nice detail there also on the side of his body as well. Even though really, again, a lot of this is silver, the additional wash that they add over top of this really does give a little nice contrast in colors to the silver. If this was guy, if this guy was just only kind of kept just to the silver plastic alone, I don't think he would pop as well as he does right now. For the figure's articulation, let's move everything kind of out of the way here. His head's going to be on a bald right? So yeah, it does rotate not only back and forth this way. You can move the head up, you can move the head down. Look at the little brains on the back of his head here. And again, it also rotates also all the way around. Now, any one of these arms, obviously being that they peg the peg the way that they do, do allow a little bit of swivel. So you can rotate these up and down, for example. You can rotate this back and forth. This one arm seems to have a hinge joint, and yet it's almost next to impossible to bend. There seems to be a cut right there indicating that this can actually move. But I think maybe perhaps it's actually just a it's actually just sculpted rather than having no articulation at all. I really don't want to force this in the risk that this potentially break. By this also being a little bit more of a softer plastic leads me to believe that's not actually articulation. It's just there to fool you. Again, any one of these can be moved. Um, there is no real hinge on these, but again, like you can just rotate these back and forth. His arms hinge back and forth, even though again, like most of his body is kind of compact like his shoulders for example are sort of inward as opposed to the broader shoulders that we tend to get with dc multiverse figures his arms do hinge forward and back this way for example you can rotate them this way the figure does also have a double hinge on the elbow uh the hand also or the entire arm really does rotate uh, there is no articulation here on his hand which again looks strange because if you're looking at it you would swear that looking at this this should actually move and yet i can't get it to bend the upper torso is going to be on a ball joint. And really, when, when I say ball joint, I mean, if you're looking at it, it ball joints only more forward like this. If you try to bring it back, obviously, it's only going to go far as far back as it goes here. And then obviously, rotating is going to be a little bit more of a problem because he's got so much backpacks, a backpack on the back of his body. Uh, just as a side note, though, am I the only one that maybe sees a face down below here? He's got like a face by the lower end of his back. Eyes, nose, mouth. I can't be the only one that's seeing that. Uh, legs do split out. They're on ratcheted joints. You can take the legs and move forward. You can move them back. There's a not much of a swivel really on the top of the thigh. Double hinge on the knee though. And then there's the articulation back and forth on the feet as well as you can rock them this way as well. I did already mention the fact. I'll mention it again here. The figure does have peg holes, yes, on the bottoms of his feet. So there's, with the, the amount of posability that this guy surprisingly has and the fact he does also come included with the display stand, you can get this guy in some pretty sick looking poses. Again, not much in the way of Brainiacs that we've gotten so far. The only other one I have in my collection as, of, as it is right now happens to be the one from Injustice, which was for a while my stand-in Brainiac. I mean, I don't know if that's going to necessarily change when we look at the regular version of the Ghosts of Krypton Brainiac, because that version of Brainiac is essentially going to be using just basically the drone that we see right now, and then it's just going to have a different Brainiac head to it. And then again, being that we have now looked at, what, three of these now? So let's bring in Superman. Let's bring in Val Zod. You know, again, while I do like the look of the Superman, Val Zod was a nice looking figure as well. I think my favorite figure so far, and that might not change either when we look at Brainiac, happens to be the drone. The drone was nicely done. And even if, again, you don't like necessarily the designs of the Ghosts of Krypton, you might find yourself actually liking the drone and end up picking it up. Not just as one that's attached to the story, but just as a regular Brainiac that you can have battling the DC superheroes. Even though I only really have the one drone so far of Brainiac, that's only so far long-term plans for how cool this figure turned out to be. I plan to probably get at least another two so I can have them on display battling the DC superheroes. Until I get a definitive version of Brainiac, I don't know if that's actually happened yet. I know in recent, what in the last year or so, McFarlane's team have really been pushing heavily the idea of now trying to do classic looking characters. They've done it with many of the superheroes. I wonder if they're going to do it with the villains as well. If it becomes the case that we eventually get ourselves a classic looking Brainiac and it's not just an Injustice Brainiac that's colored, lighter colors, then definitely this guy's going to be on display several of these will be on display with a classic brainiac the head sculpt looks kind of more like the original superpowers brainiac that robotic one that you would have been in galaxy it was it the galactic guardians one of the many super friends cartoons that aired in the series and of course kenner then branched off and i think they did do a superpowers version of it mattel did one 
the basic the point is is that this one really does resemble very nicely that classic looking brainiac if you like robotic brainiac as opposed to the alien green skin version of him this one does the job rather nicely because again like all those arms and appendages that he have are universally using the same sized pegs means that you can change around the configuration some of the placement of the parts make a little bit more sense in certain areas like for example the little butler arm belongs i think better down on his lower end of his body as opposed to the top of his head and then you can just decide for yourself where everything else goes he has a lumbering stance to him the way he's articulated there's so much going on for this figure that I mean, to have him kind of leaning over like this gives him even more of a menacing look. Now, take again that idea and multiply by three, four, five, depending on how many of these you really do want to get. This guy is definitely worth picking up as an army builder. Even if you're not as much familiar with Ghost of Krypton, the look of the character certainly does stand out, and it's my favorite so far. Big thank you. Big thank you once again to the folks over at McFarlane Toys that did come through and provide the sample of the Page Punchers Ghost of Krypton Brainiac Drone. Even though it really on the front of the package, it just actually says Brainiac. But being that there's hundreds of these things that the Kryptonian has to battle in the comics, I'm just calling it the Crypt we're calling it the Brainiac drone. We will be, by the way, looking at the Platinum Edition Brainiac. And now that I'm looking at this, actually, being that it's Platinum Edition, like the Armored Platinum Edition of Val Zod, it's very unlikely that that's going to be issue number two. And I think that that's going to be belonging then to the spectral version of General Zod, which just happened to be the one figure I didn't end up getting. Might still end up trying to pick that one up. And obviously, if that is the case, that he's issue number two of four, it's even more crucial to pick up that figure so I can actually complete at least the story in the comics. If you guys did enjoy this video, why not throw it a like? If you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing and you want to stick around for the remaining reviews of the Ghosts of Krypton figures of the Page Punchers line, if you haven't already done so, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and that you're turning on the bell notification. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.